Musk tweeted a link to an article that indicated Mr Pelosi knew his attacker. The tweet was since deleted. Paul Pelosi suffered a skull fracture after an intruder broke into the couple's home in San Francisco, of course. Well, let's speak to the editor of Spiked, Spiked magazine, that is, Tom Slater. Um, Tom, should Elon Musk say sorry? Well, I think he shouldn't have to apologise for having an opinion. I mean, it's not one that I would particularly share. But I thought the response that he gave later on showed that there's always two sides to these different stories. There was a piece in the New York Times, as you say, flagging up that he posted this particular story. But, you know, over the course of recent years, the New York Times, many other mainstream publications have pushed stories and narratives which turned out not to be true. Um, this isn't to deflect any criticisms of Elon Musk or any one individual for the opinions that they have. Everyone should have at it. But, you know, when we're talking about social media, it's often treated as very straightforward what is truth and what is illusion. We end up at that through debate and public discussion. And I think really in terms of the reaction to that particular response to Hillary Clinton, I think it's more wrapped up in the anger that someone who's a bit more pro-free speech has acquired Twitter than it mm. is shock and horror that he's hold a particular opinion or did until we decided to delete that tweet, as you said. But is this a free speech issue? Of course, people should be able to post whatever they want. Many people would think that, of course. Well, some people would disagree, but many people would think that you should be able to post whatever you want to post, even if that is links to dodgy articles. But if you're the person who owns Twitter, you're the person who wants to be the steward of what you might describe as this sort of marketplace of ideas, does that not put a special responsibility on, on Elon Musk to be more careful about what he tweets? Well, I think there is, of course, there's an element of responsibility when you have a big platform like that and when you're in charge of a big <laughs> platform like that. But at the same time, I think who decides what is and isn't misinformation is by no means a settled subjects. We've seen that in recent years, things like the Hunter Biden expose from the New York Post, suppressed by the former leadership of Twitter as well as Facebook, because that was deemed to be misinformation until about a year ago, when the mainstream effectively accepted that that um, story was true. I guess what I'm saying is that even this particular slightly silly story that we've um, that Elon Musk has got himself into around this particular attack and the theories that are swirling online around it just demonstrate that these things are never as straightforward as, as even the kind of establishment sort of media would like to make out. Um, there's always a different side to those stories. But at the same, and also I think the more that we kind of create a situation in which different perspectives can't be discussed, the more you fuel conspiracism, really, of the kind mm. that we might see up in recent days. So I think it's just important we maintain a sense of perspective in that, I guess.